As with many sports games, another year means another annual release, along with a new cover, updated rosters and those ball physics that EA keeps talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean the innovative EA Sports dynamic handling that redefines the car's physics to increase control and puts the vehicle's performance and race strategy in the hands. Unless you absolutely have to have the latest rosters or there's a big change in rules or regulations, it's usually pretty smart to only buy every second or third year. But every now and then, a significant leap in a sports game franchise arrives that completely revolutionizes the experience and demands your money right away. F124? is not that kind of game. Thanks to easy access on EA Play and Game Pass, a group of us get together in F123 every race week to compete for the best time on the upcoming track, and then on Friday night have a mix of a 25% race, followed by a few short fun sessions of full damage destruction derby. As a result of these races and spending hours in time trials every week or two trying to knock an extra tenth off a friend's time, I've spent more time playing F1 than I have in the past few years, and I think that last year's F1 is pretty awesome, despite its flaws. While there are a few new features in F124, like driver radios featuring actual driver voices, yeah, good job, good comms and everything, so cheers and a few little improvements, there's no story-driven breaking point career mode this year, and no more supercars. There's the ability to play career mode as existing F1 drivers, as well as legends from the past, but no historic cars or tracks to go with them. Also, I just don't know how some of these real drivers would have felt knowing that they were digitally reincarnated in the future as a pre-order bonus for some kid waving around his mom's credit card. An exclusive to F124 Champions Edition, 1976 champion James Hunt. You're still extremely fast. How do you do it? Big balls. <laughs> Forget it. But it's true! <laughs> what really doesn't help F124's case either is that for the first time in its entire history starting in 1950, Formula 1 has the exact same driver lineup as it did the year before. So you don't even get any changes there. Well, there is one very important visual update. Since EA took over, the menus are less about helping you navigate the game screens and more about getting you moving your body to its big beats. An hour through this part of the track. And nothing's changed this year. It feels like a 90s skating rink all up in here. The handling this year feels a bit weird. Oh, excuse me. The innovative EA Sports dynamic handling that redefines the car's physics to increase control feels a bit weird. While F1 has never been a full sim, it feels like it's not even trying to pretend at all this year. With the cars feeling strangely pointy in the corners with loads of grip and a tendency to feel like they're rotating around their center. It feels like it might be easier than ever to get an F1 car around a circuit, but that's not necessarily a good thing. It is worth noting that they did add new modes to control your energy deployment now. But I don't expect you to understand it. I note it, Mr. Scott, without necessarily understanding it. A few tracks have been updated, but the updates to Spa totally should have already been in last year's game or come as a free update. And the upgrades to tracks like Saudi Arabia and Qatar are a bit of a joke when famous and iconic tracks like Brazil, Italy and Canada are still terribly outdated. The engines don't seem to sound too good either. In fact, a quick comparison between a real-life onboard and both 23 and 24 proved exactly that. you again today Anthony Davidson commentary also sounds off with some personalities sounding a bit strange and timing updates can be pretty janky okay gap ahead 6.9 seconds while last year's game wasn't that much better it's not a good look when NBA 2k games have had commentary that sounds like this Smith for three it's hauled in by Los Angeles and back to the Lakers struggles last season what do you think Clark not two not five but ten years ago and do I even need to mention that they were doing this in F1 games four PlayStations ago? So beginning to come on. No, the Belgians 
Grand Prix stuff. He hit Michael Schumacher. Good stuff. He forces his way through. Character models look great and are now used in the menus, but the graphics aren't much better at all. Still held back by EA's need to keep the game cross-gen for those, you know. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Anyone who watches F1 knows what the pit crews generally look like and at this point there are a few familiar faces around the paddock that you might recognize. Like the handsome Ferrari parking attendant, this dashing Red Bull guy and a lot of these folks. So who the heck are these people? I know that it's unrealistic to want them to get every single pit crew member modeled for the game but like at least have a rough go at keeping things authentic. So then, if it's not abundantly clear at this point, I don't think F124 is worth purchasing at all right now, and I don't know if it'll be worth purchasing later either. What I can tell you is that there are new regulations coming to F1 in 2026, so unless you desperately want to own a game with Hamilton in Ferrari Red or Gunter Steiner as the official F1 mascot, I'd say it's a pretty good bet to hang on to your money until then. There's a good chance that it's going to come to Game Pass in a year or so. And when it does, you too can group up with a bunch of friends to torture each other with the news of your latest lap time. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button to let me know. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and also check out some of the other videos on the channel. In fact, here are some you might like. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.